Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, and in today's video, I want to cover the security of DCI equipment. I want to cover this because recently there was a theft in Brazil of $9 million worth of DCI equipment, including projectors and players. Now, there was a lot of questions asked about, well, can this equipment be used? What's going to happen to this equipment? Where is it going to, to show up? Uh, and can it show up due to the security? And in today's video, I want to quickly go over why pretty much that equipment is next to worthless due to its the security aspects of the DCI standards. Now, just to start off with, we'll quickly go over um, why that is the case with something you're probably using right now in watching this video. Behind me on the screen is my YouTube page for my Sydney Tech Geek videos. It's on Google, and Google pretty much uses SSL security for every site that it has, and most sites are starting to move to that today. And what that means, so that's SSL security is very much based on similar to what DCI uses. And in this case, uh, when you're using an SSL certificate to secure your website, you go to a certificate authority like an organization which checks you out and guarantees who you are and then gives you a certificate um, based on them, their root certificate, to authorize the fact that you, you are who you say you are. And like that, it's very similar with DCI. But in this case, the certificate authorities are the manufacturers of the equipment themselves. When equipment goes out there, that equipment has a media, a media uh, or secure media system in there, or sec secure media block in some cases. And this is protected via high security, hardware security, fit, usually under, under FIPS, uh, which is a military grade type of security uh, um, standard. And that pretty much protects that equipment from uh, the, the certificates hidden away in that equipment by be, from being touched or fiddled with or, or, or anything like that. And that is basically baked into the equipment. If you fiddle with that, the equipment stops working altogether, pretty much altogether. Now, so that's basically like, you can't basically scratch the serial number off this stuff, dude, because it's part of how it works. It's part of the actual internal workings of the DCI projector or media player. So when you try and use this equipment, for example, to use it for what it's for is to play encrypted content, you need to get the public certificate from your that represents your equipment and send it to the person who wants to make a KDM for you. Now, if obviously, that certificate that you're sending to them can then be checked against the root certificates of each of the vendors. And if it is one of the stolen bits of equipment, bing, bing, there you go, they've been found, alarm bells go off, send the police. So how can this equipment be used? Well, it can't be used for what it's designed for, and that's for playing DCI movies. It's just it's like walking around with a sign on your head saying, take me to jail. So it's pretty much worthless. And to even think about purchasing this equipment is a silly idea. So what will happen to it? Well, it's hard to say. I'm hoping that a lot of it will be discovered or found as Celluloid Junkie who covered this story the best. Um, you'll see here on, on the screen. Uh, very good website to go for anything about uh, this sort of information or exhibition information and what's happening with it around the world. But as you can see here, they reported it, and then later on reported how large portions of the equipment, there's, there's a large a whole semi-trailer full of it, and then there's another factory full of more equipment along the walls, all, all through the walls there. So a large portion has been found, and I'm hoping a lot of more of it will be found as well, because it, it just doesn't make any sense. You can't really sell it. So I'm hoping you appreciate this uh, uh, video and how the security of digital cinema exists. Uh, one last aspect of it I wanted to cover is that even if you weren't using the equipment for showing movies, if you need to maintain or upgrade the equipment, in many situations, not all, but in some situations, you still need to contact the manufacturer to get certificates to allow those upgrades to happen. So again, um, the equipment is not very serviceable um, for most of you know what it would designed and used for. So there you go. Uh, if you do know anything about this equipment, um, please inform those and hopefully that will all show up and everyone will be happy because um, let's help uh, cinema throughout the world and that's why I make these blogs. So long live cinema. That's James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek. Bye for now.